I appreciate that. I understand what you were saying uh, about being drawn to people. I, I just fell in love with you guys the first time that I heard you all. And uh, you got great, great harmony, but more than all, not only in your singing, you've got harmony in the way that you live and the way that you, uh, the way that you treat each other. And uh, that's rare these days. Uh, somebody asked me, or somebody said that this is going to be a long-winded preacher. I told him, no, it's going to be short and sweet, just like I am. <laughs> Where's the <a> real chat? <laughs> Where's the <a> real chat? <laughs> I guess if Junior Blakey don't want to preach, I'll have to. So. <laughs> if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, if I had to put a title to this, I would call it For Such a Time as This. And hopefully we'll understand that a little bit better here in just a few minutes. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in uh, about verse 14. This is Paul writing here to the church at Ephesus. He says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for, uh, uh, for this opportunity. God, uh, I don't want to take this lightly. It's, it's not uh, something that I've done without, um, without prayer. And uh, I pray that all those listening, that all those here tonight, God, you prepare their hearts, prepare their ears, that they receive the word that, that you would have them to receive, God. Anoint my lips, anoint my heart, God. Let me uh, speak the word that you would have me to speak. God, let me get the message across that you want to get across. Amen. Uh, not my agenda, not uh, something I've come up with, but God, something that's that's founded in Your Word. Amen. Yes. I pray, uh, 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 especially for those that are lost. Yes. Yes. For those that don't know You, that haven't come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, God, I ask that You would show them that You love them. Show them that You sent Your only Son down on them. Amen down to this earth to die on a cruel cross yes. just for them just for them and for every single person in the world yes, Jesus. it's a free gift Father bless the preacher I pray in Jesus' name Amen. 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 Amen Verse 16 here says redeeming the time because the days are evil uh, I don't think it takes a whole lot of convincing to tell uh, a group here that's probably majority Christian from it all but we're living in some evil days. Uh, and not to depress you, but uh, it's not looking too good out there in the world. Uh, I looked up some statistics, and uh, to be pretty honest, things look pretty bleak. In the United States of America alone, there's over 30,000 suicides each year. And those are just the ones that are reported. The divorce rate's close to 50%. There's over one million abortions each year. And there's around 10,000 deaths due to a drunk driving crash. Mm. And that's just a few of the things that I, that I can find that I pull. It's looking pretty bad. But guess what? You've got to have the bad news before you can have the good. Just mm -hmm. like you've got you to show somebody that they're lost before you can show them that, that they need to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, but we aren't the only people who have had uh, bad times. I want to tell you all a story about a, a kingdom a few thousand years ago. Uh, there was an evil king that ruled this kingdom. His name was uh, Hazarus. And he, uh, to, be, to be real honest, he, he didn't care about God. He had this pantheon of gods, idols, everything that he served. He didn't know the true way. One day he decided to throw him a party. And the Bible, uh, the Bible says that they were drunk. They, uh, just every kind of wickedness that you could imagine. After about 180 days, 
of this party going on. He said he wanted his wife. He wanted to show his wife off. Her name was Vashti. She was the queen. And so he brought her, or he tried to bring her, uh, so he could show her off. She said, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. You're, you're a bunch of men. You're drunk, and you, you don't know what you're doing. Just And so he got pretty mad about that, and he kicked her out of the kingdom. He banished her from the palace, and she was no longer the queen. So they had to search for somebody. They had to search for a queen, and the king had to have a queen. They found a little Jewish girl uh, by the name of Esther. And uh, after putting her and hundreds, hundreds of other uh, candidates for queen uh, through this rigorous process, it lasted about a year, 12 months. They, they took those young ladies before the, the king and had him pick who he wanted to be his queen. And when he saw Esther, that was it. He didn't want to see anybody else. It was Esther. And so she became queen. Now, what the king didn't know and what the, the people in the palace and the servants didn't know was that Esther was a Jew. Uh, they were living, the Jews were living in a land that time that was... They were under captivity because they, it was that process. They sinned against God. God brought them into captivity. And uh, you read in the Bible, you can read in the book of Judges how that happened time and time and time again. But uh, Esther had an uncle by the name of Mordecai. And uh, I'll tell you, when I get to heaven, I'd like to sit down with Mordecai. He was a, he was a wise man. And he told Esther, he said, listen, don't tell them you're a Jew. Don't tell them yet. He said, just wait. Go ahead and be the queen. Now, you think, well, things are looking good for Esther. She's in the palace. She's getting you know, whatever she wants. And she's rich. Listen, this was a, she was an orphan. Her parents had died. She was pulled away from everything she'd ever known. And uh, I think a lot of times we think, imagine Esther, maybe late 20s, early something like that. You know how old? I studied, I was curious. I thought, how old was Esther when all this went on? And, and to the best of my knowledge and the best that the scholars can come up with, she was about 14 years old hmm. when all this happened. She was pulled away from the only family she had, her uncle. Her parents had already died. She was in a strange place with strange gods. No doubt she was pretty scared. Things were looking pretty bad. She could uh, easily have gotten her prayers. But she didn't. She kept her faith in God. Mm -hmm. Now listen, the, the king had appointed a prime minister by the name of Haman. And that prime minister saw Mordecai, who had come often to the, the palace gate there to visit Esther. And he noticed that Mordecai didn't bow down to him. Now, here's Haman. He's the prime minister. He's supposed to be all high and mighty. You're supposed to bow down to him. That was, that was the law. That was the law the king had come up with. That was, that was their pagan tradition. Well, Mordecai was a Jew. He served the one true God. He wasn't going to do that. So needless to say, Haman got pretty mad. He went to the king. He said, hey, there's these people living in your land. They're the Jews. They only serve one God. Imagine that. And, uh, you know, to them, that was just strange. Their whole pantheon, hundreds of gods. And he said, he doesn't bow down. And king, who's to say that they won't rebel? That they won't uh, respect you? So the king said, all right, what do you want me to do? He said, let's kill him. I tell you, people have been trying to get rid of uh, God's people for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Hitler wasn't the first. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it started long before Haman. Mm -hmm. It started. But God had a plan. Mm -hmm. Mordecai found out about this. They were going to kill all the Jews. And he went to Esther, and Esther's, this was, Esther was about 19 at this time, as best we can read. And he told Esther, he begged Esther to go and to uh, go to the king. To tell him that he couldn't do this, that this was her people. But the king had a rule, and that rule was you couldn't visit him unless he had invited you. And if you went without an invitation, if he didn't extend... Uh, the scepter that he held there on his throne to you, 
then you'd be put to death. And, and Esther was scared, and rightly so. But uh, if you look at Esther chapter 4, and this is a passage that's very, very special to me. Esther chapter 4, verse 11. Esther sent uh, servants to Mordecai with this message. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And this, this is a verse right here, verse 13, that is just so special. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Listen, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. He is saying, look, God's going to protect. He said that the Jews, they're God's chosen people. They're going to survive. But you won't. And all the, all the Jews, that all, all of your distant family, all those that have been of your father's house, they're going to be killed if you don't do something. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? See, God had a plan in all that. Even when things looked bad for Esther, even when she was pulled away from everything she had ever known at 14 years old, God knew what He was doing. Right. He knew where to put her. He knew when to put her there. Right. See, everything comes together. It's it's part of God's perfect plan. Now that that verse fourteen, uh, verse fourteen there is is uh, special to me for a for a reason. That phrase for such a time as this. Uh, there was a time probably about uh, three or four years ago. When I, I didn't understand what God's will was for me, I didn't know where I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to do, and I was, I was heartbroken. Um, I, was, I would go to the altar, and this is not bragging, this is, this is just me telling, um, telling uh, how God can help. But I would go to the altar just about every service, cry and beg God to show me. What am I supposed to do? What's what's my purpose? And I'll never forget this young preacher that I, I just have the utmost respect for. He came and put his put his hand on me while I was praying and he said and I remember this, I'll never forget it, because he said it more than once, multiple times on multiple occasions. He said, God, raise him up for such a time as this. Mm. And that got me thinking. We're all put here, now. Yeah. We're all, all of us here in this room, we're here at WDFB for a reason. Mm -hmm. We're having this radio revival for a reason. Mm -hmm. sure. The days that are evil out there, we've been putting those evil days for a reason. What's yeah. that reason? We're supposed to redeem the time. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to buy back the time for God. It, it's all for Him. You know what? God, just like God had a plan for Esther, See, the story with Esther is not finished yet. She went to the king, and, uh, and long story short, after, after a series of, of, uh, of dinners that she threw for the king and for Haman, she told him that she was a Jew. She told him that her people were going to be destroyed, and that he, he, he had to do something about it. And so he did. He couldn't, he couldn't reverse the law, but he made a new decree that said that the Jews would be able to defend themselves and that anybody who came against, against, against a Jew would be uh, subject to death. And uh, not one Jew, you don't read in the Bible where one Jew in that occasion was ever harmed, was ever hurt, was ever killed. And guess what happened to Haman? He had built a gallows specifically for Mordecai because Mordecai was who had angered him so much. And the king said, hang him, on, hang him on his own gallows. And Haman's, Haman's entire family, his ten sons, 
they were killed in that in that whole uh, in that whole ordeal. You think, well, that's kind of drastic. Look, God protects His people. <laughs> he protects His chosen people. He'll do what it takes. That's right. Don't you want to be on His side? <laughs> But just like he had a, had a plan for Esther, he's got a plan for all of us. Listen, he knew that I'd be here tonight. He knew that on December 29th, 1995, at Ephraim McDowell Regional Medical Center, that little loudmouth Joshua Thomas was going to be born. <laughs> and he put him in, in that place at that time yeah. for a specific reason. Right. He, knew, he knew at that time, even before I was ever born, before I was ever thought of, that I was going to be here tonight. That's right. That's right. He knew that, that 29 years ago at a little Wesleyan church when some brothers got up and started singing, hmm. he knew that they'd still be singing today. Yeah, sure. Sure. That they'd still be traveling and, and doing what was right for the Lord. Just like uh, that verse back in Ephesians said, Ephesians chapter 5, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Listen, we were all dead in our sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but Christ came and he shone a light on those sins. He allowed us to see that we were in a desperate, lost, depressing condition. That we were miserable yeah. in our sins. Yeah. Amen. And he saved us. Yes, sir. But he didn't stop there. Right. That same light that he shone on our sins, he then gave us that light. And He told us to go out and shine it for the whole world to see. Amen. To redeem the time. In the place that we... There's a, there's a song that says... Uh, uh, it, it talks about uh, shining your light where you are. Mm -hmm. in, in uh, You in your small corner and I in mine. We've been placed where we're placed. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're, where we're supposed to shine for the Lord. Amen. I started off with some bad news, some pretty depressing news, some pretty depressing statistics. But guess what? I've got some good news too. That's good. Man. Yes. Some good statistics right out of the Word of God. Now, uh, Romans 10, you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. I'll be going through these pretty quick. But Romans 10, uh, 12 and 13, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, Junior Blakey here, you're, you used to be a math teacher, as I understand. And so you probably know a little bit about statistics. Now, math is not my strong point. I, I barely made it through math in school by the skin of my teeth. But, but I believe I'm right on this. Those words, all and whosoever, still mean 100%, don't they? <laughs> yes, sir. That means that whoever... Listen. We're all lost. The Bible says all of sin. That's 100%. That's bad news. Mm -hmm. But whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, that's all. That's 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can be saved. That's right. 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 It's by that cleansing blood of Jesus. Amen. That's the only way. No, there's no other name under heaven by which man can be saved. Amen. That name of Jesus. Listen, right. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Right. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things <laughs> are become new. I think that's still 100%. <laughs> when you get saved, everything... Everything is going to change. The friends that you hang out with, the things that you do, the things that you watch, the things you put before your eyes. Yes, sir. The places that you go, it's going to change. And it's not going to change. It's not a force. God doesn't force anybody to get saved. He doesn't force anybody to change. But here's what happens: when you get saved, He places new desires in your heart. If, if listen, I know that people struggle with things. That, that people struggle with addictions, that people struggle with all kinds of things. But listen, when, when, you, when you get saved, you're not going to find pleasure in them anymore. It's true. It's, true. it's, it's, gonna, it's all going to be different. Your desires, you're going to want to be in church every time the doors are open. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not just to say you fulfilled your <coughs> obligation, your weekly obligation. It, it's, it's so you can be with the, the body of believers. We're not okay. Times are bad. And the closer we get to the end times, which I believe that we're living right in that today, Amen. the closer we get to the return of Christ, we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Come on. We're supposed to be with brothers and sisters. Why? It's not so we can look at each other, so we can fuss with each other. Uh, the old song uh, says uh, this church tried to buy a piano. 
And they decided they just couldn't buy it because it was going to split the church up. But first they had to figure out how to pay for it. And then they had to figure out where they was going to put it. And then they had to figure out who was going to play it. And uh, listen, I believe in church they get... We get too caught up in things that'll, uh, little things that'll split us up. That happens way too often. And I've seen, I've seen many a church fall by the wayside. Good church. People that were on fire for the Lord. People that had a true love that wanted to do what was right. But just that little seed of dissension, it'll come and uh, it'll split people apart. You have to watch that. You have to watch that. Listen, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, that's 100%. That's right. <laughs> Work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to stop that all things work together for good, but there's a little more to it. Than that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not until you, till you call upon the name of the Lord, and it's not until you, uh, you've experienced that change where all things have become new that all things can work together for good. Because it says all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that are the called according to His purpose. Mm, yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm not called or you called. Well, guess what? We're all called to do something. That's right. In the time that we are put. God called us to this time, to this place, to do a work that He's, he's going to prepare us to do. You know, God doesn't, uh, God doesn't call the prepared. He prepares the called. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to be perfect to come to God. When you come, He'll He'll fix all that for you. Yeah. It'll take a little work on your part. It'll take a little dedication. But with His help, you can do it. Amen. Matthew nineteen twenty six. With God, all things are possible. You say I can't change. I've tried. Well, guess what? You can't change. Not without God's help. That's right. But with Him, all things are possible. He can break whatever addiction you've got. He can. He can. Uh, he can set you free. I heard a preacher say one time, there may be some people say, well, I, I've been a good moral person all my life. I've never suffered from any kind of addiction. Guess what? Yes, you have. If, if you're still out in your in your sins, guess what? You're, you're addicted to sin. Mm -hmm. We're all addicts before coming to the Lord. Yeah, sure. We're sin addicts. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. and, in, and until that our desires have been changed, we'll, we'll keep on being addicted to it. And uh, believe me, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But once you come to Christ, He'll help you with it. You don't have to go it alone. Those things that you do when, when you're in the dark, when the lights go down and nobody sees you. The person that you are when nobody's around, and nobody's watching you, watching you. That's who you really are. And you may, be, you may live a good moral life out in front of everybody. But I believe everybody's got at least that one thing that they're going to struggle with. Listen, if you're out in sin, if you've not yet come to Christ, uh, it's in your nature to sin. We've got that sin nature that came from Adam, that passed down. And it's not until that second Adam, Jesus Christ, came and died on the cross and shed His blood that we can be changed, that we can be free from that. And then the person that you are when nobody's watching, what do you do then? You're praying. You're saying, Lord, help help me to draw closer to you. You're reading your Bible every day. Listen, you can't as a Christian, you, you will die and wither up spiritually if you don't read your Bible every day. If you don't pray, you've got to hey, listen. Food for the body, water for the body, that's important. But even more important is that spiritual food. Amen. That only only God can give you. That only comes from His Word and communion with Him in prayer. I don't, I don't know everybody's heart. Uh, I look out at the crowd tonight and uh, I see people that I love, a lot of people I know, uh, not very many that I don't. And uh, I firmly believe that at least the majority of you are saved. But I don't know the heart. And who's to say how many hundreds of thousands of people are, are watching online, are listening online, listening on the radio? going down the road, listen. I've been where you've been. There's a song that says, Friend, I too have stood where you stand. Could I trust in things unseen? Mm -hmm. But just one step, it's that one step of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Just one step in His direction. Mm -hmm. Then in love, 
He ran to me. If you'll just, if you're wondering, is this real? Is is this? It's it's not. Listen, it's not some imaginary man in the sky. This is the, he's the King of Kings, and he's the one who he's the one who put you here. Listen, he's the one that that sets you in the place that you are. Why why are you where you are now? So you can work for him. And he's called you to do a work. It, when you get saved, he's going to call you to do a work for him. Well, I can't preach. Well, maybe you need to pray. Can you sing? Sing. Do, do you talk well to people one on one? Go out and witness. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, the, the brother preached last night about how uh, a lot of times we use the excuse that we're too shy. Listen, there's there's folks, and he he made this point. Folks in other countries, they don't have a church to go to, and they still share the the love of Jesus with those around them. Listen, we pass by a church. There are three or four churches on this road alone. And uh, and we don't even uh, we don't even stop to go in. That's right. We don't stop to to thank God that we live in a country where, fortunately, we are still free to, to gather together like Amen. this Amen. to worship God in spirit and in truth. But listen, if you're struggling, if you don't know what you're supposed to do. There's one simple answer to every question you've ever had. Turn to Jesus. He's the only one that can set you free. He's the only one that knows you better than you know yourself. When you have questions, when you don't know what you believe, and I've been there, I've said, Lord, I've been to the point where I've said, God, are you real? Listen. He's revealed Himself to us Right here, in His right. Word. Right. This is is the living proof that He is real. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? This this is a living Word. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just a book that some dozens of men wrote, put together. That uh, the Thomas Nelson binds and then they <laughs> put it in whatever version they want to and just pass it out. Listen. It's a living word. Amen. Amen. Yes. It it is uh, it is God God breathed. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, He's given to us. It's His revelation to us about who He is and His plan. And He's given us the world in which we live. When you when you look out at that sunset, He made that. Mm -hmm. The colors, the birds that you see flying by, He cares about them. So much that not when one of them falls out of the tree, when one of them falls out of the nest, he sees it and he cares about it. Amen. And he cares about you so much more. Because we've got souls. And that soul's going to live forever. Listen, this body's going to die one day. If the Lord carries, I'll die one day. It's, it's a fact of life. They'll bury me six feet under. And, and, uh, this fleshly body will just rot. It's not pretty, but it's the truth. But my soul's going to live forever. Amen. The, the soul doesn't die, and it's going to live in one or two places, heaven or hell. You say, well, God wouldn't send anybody to hell. He doesn't. He doesn't. You send yourself. When you reject, when you reject Him and His Son, You've rejected heaven and chosen Amen. hell for yourself. Amen. It's not his choice. It's not his will that any would perish, Amen. but that all would come to repentance. Yes. He he loves you so much that he sent his only son to die. John three sixteen, which has been quoted so many times, but it's I don't think anybody in this world has ever yet grasped. How uh, how big that statement made there really is. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world, <coughs> this depressing mm -hmm. world that we live in, where all these bad things have happened. It's not because of Him, it's because of our sin nature. He, he loved the people here so much, and He saw that they were, they were eternal souls. 
that he sent his only begotten Son, the only one he had, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you believe on him, listen, he'll, he'll, he's got a work in mind for you. He's got a plan. There's something in motion here. If you're listening, if you just hit the button on the car radio and you heard this, there's a reason for that. He's got this thing all planned out. He knows how it's going to wind up. He knows how it started. He knows. John, if you can come get us a song. Like I said, I don't know everybody's hearts. But I do know that there's one that loves you more than I ever could. More than I, I could possibly try. And he wants you. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to surrender your life. It'll take surrender, full, complete surrender. And it's not until you've waved that white flag that you can have true victory and right in him. So if you would. Stop whatever you're doing. If you're driving down the road, pull over. If you're sitting in your house, just bow your head. Ask Him. That's all it takes. He'll reveal Himself to you. Yes, He will. He'll, he'll, he'll show you what to do. Call on His name. Ask Him to, to save you. If you're already saved and you've been drifting, Listen, he, he's calling for you to come back home. Man, that's right. He wants to use you. He's got a work for you. And it's not too late. As long as there's breath, there's hope. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise Father God, I, I pray for those that are out there listening. To those that are here tonight. There's so much hurt. And so many people that are struggling. I can't claim to know what everybody's going through because I don't. But I know what I've been through and I know what you've helped me with. God, I know you can help them too. Yes. Convict those that need to be convicted if it, if it takes them to so miserable that they can't sleep until they find you can do that. Yes. God, do what it takes. Draw back the backs them. Draw them closer to you. Yes. God, set that fire in the Christian's heart. Fan the flames that he would, uh, that he or she would once again have that first love. Amen. Bless we pray in Jesus' name.